Okay, I want to go through some of these comments. I probably don't do this often enough. But um, let me give some thoughts on some of the comments that people are writing. And um, appreciate this top one here. And okay, so um, I don't know Portuguese at all, really. But my point in this video was to uh, equate the tree of knowledge of good and evil with giving a child or making chocolate chip cookies and telling a child they can't eat the chocolate chip cookies and then walking out of the room when you do that you know the child's gonna go into the kitchen and find them chocolate chip cookies it's gonna happen just like God knew Adam and Eve would eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil so I'm not sure if I'm understanding that correctly. I didn't mean to imply that there were chocolate chip cookies in the Garden of Eden, but um, essentially my point is that this was meant to happen this way, and because this happened this way, we need a savior. All things happen for a reason. Okay, Richie says, what do you say to those people that say that the verse about not forgiving your brother our father in heaven won't forgive us as proof once saved always saved is false so let's find that verse I think that's in Matthew 6 isn't it let's see if I can find that verse oh, of course I can't I can't find nothing whenever I want to Matthew 18 well oh, Matthew 6 is where it says um, forgive our debts as we forgive those who are in debt to us so let's do it this way moreover if thy brother shall trespass against thee Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. And if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. And Peter asked, um, Shall I forgive him seven times? And Jesus says, I say not unto thee seven times, until seventy-seven times, or seventy times seven. Essentially, that means forgive him every time. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. All right, so to go, let's go back up and get a little context. Let's see if we can find a good starting point here. <clears throat> so when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord, all that was done then his Lord after that he had called him said unto him O thou wicked servant I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me shouldest not thou also have had companions on thy fellowship I'm sorry on thy fellow servant even as I had pity on you on thee and his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him so likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses so you're going to be in torment just like we read um, the Lord chasteneth and scourges every son whom he receives okay so 
basically our conscious, our spirit will convict us if we don't forgive our brothers, our friends of their trespasses, of their sins against us. I mean, it happens all the time. Life has taught you that. And so Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He brings us peace that only comes from above. The only way you can have peace is if you forgive those who sin against you. Right? And so God wants us to have peace. That's why he's saying, look, forgive not seven times, but 70 times seven times. This is how you get peace. Okay, so... Whatever trouble you have between you and your friend or your brother, let that be on them and not on you. And you do that by forgiving them for their weaknesses, if you will, for their trespasses against you. And But to say, well, if you don't forgive, you're going to lose your salvation, that's just ridiculous. All right, so it... One great example is, um, you know, if, if, if you have children, your child is always going to be your child. And just like we're always going to be a child of God when we are saved. God, what kind of what wicked God do you believe in that would cast out his child for making a mistake for being in the air you wouldn't do it as you know a human why would God do it as God of all as as um, you know a loving merciful graceful God he wouldn't it's just ridiculous all right so these people that are against once saved always saved they won't understand it you could explain it to them plainly and they still wouldn't get it All right. knowledge is power no oh it's crazy knowledge right there thanks for sharing I don't know what he's saying no this person preached the a wrong gospel well if that's what you believe okay I'd like to know why Because you could be anybody. You could be a Satan worshiper. You come in and say no. Well, tell me how you're going to be saved. The incredible things that God created like time. Right. So that's kind of an, uh, an iffy issue too, if you will, because um, I heard somebody say uh, years ago that God will put an end to time. Well, I don't believe that at all. Let's see if I can find that verse. Let's see. Jesus says, uh, "Oh, I'm not going to be able to find it. It might be time no longer." Oh, crying out loud. Let's see if I can find it this way. Oh, in Revelation, there it is. Revelation 10, verse 6, And swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. Now, I've seen people misunderstand this verse here to think that time is going to stop. That's not true at all. That's ridiculous. What this is referring to is that this world is coming to an end and that the time for this world is no longer. Not that time itself is going to stop. Okay, We're going to be suspended Hey, it's just ridiculous, okay? 
it's this is very clearly speaking of the end of the world the end of the time of this world so and then the other aspect of why I think it's a kind of an iffy deal is that you have dum-dums like Albert Einstein and NASA claiming that time fluctuates in outer space yeah. like these um, magical uh, what do you call these spaceships that they have in outer space these satellites they got these satellites that orbit this uh, imaginary planet and the time goes slower in this uh, magical um, fairy tale land or area of outer space and that's it's just silly nonsense it's fairy tale stuff right so you know that's that's my view on it okay and I'm not sure what Robo was referring to um, if you have a problem with what number nine says I welcome uh, your thoughts on it um, to me the gospel is simple believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved it's that easy of course <laughs> that has to mean that you cannot believe or cannot trust in your own self to be saved you have to give it all to Jesus and you give it all to Jesus he gives it all to you and so I mean if you're trusting in yourself at all to save yourself boy you're in a lot of trouble all right so um, being called a bishop I you know what I would take issue I just don't like labeling myself I could label myself all kinds of labels the great Jimmy you know the Bishop Jimmy or, or um, you know Pastor Jimmy or you know I'd be a Catholic and call myself Father Jimmy right and um, I could call myself a Bible scholar I, I'm just as much a Bible scholar as uh, those people that go to college and what do you got in college that I don't have in my Bible there's something wrong if I can if I can't be a Bible scholar simply because I have a Bible if I have to have more there's a problem All right but so we see the office of a bishop is certainly biblical so I mean you want to call yourself a bishop that's fine I just it's not for me right I think you're exalting yourself when you should be humbling yourself alright I appreciate these positive comments Aaron Beacon the tree and fruit in Genesis is not literal and the King James version has many many mistranslations oh so the the King James version has many many mistranslation so we have to depend on Aaron Beacon to tell us what God really says I mean think about it wh how what are you basing your your idea off of is you got a you got a perfect Bible and you're saying well this perfect Bible conflicts with the King James Version well show me this perfect Bible just tell me the name of it where can I find it You see what I'm saying you're basing it off of your own imagination that's why there's no perfect Bible mentioned here because the perfect Bible is the imagination of Aaron Beacon according to Aaron Beacon I mean that's ridiculous you're gonna if you're gonna make the claim you gotta have some uh, you gotta have a basis in which you're making this claim and there is no original Bible there is no original manuscript it doesn't exist you hear people say this all the time well you gotta go back to the originals well the problem is there are no originals uh, it, it's uh, astonishing to me how many times you can repeat that to somebody and it just won't sink into their head that there is no original because they want to believe pastor 
dum dum who says well the original says this okay so throw out everything you have forget the bible that you hold in your hands and you got to believe and trust what pastor dum dum is saying is so your the word of god is coming from pastor dum dum and not from the book that you're holding in your hand that's lunacy in my humble opinion anyway i could go on for days on that subject come on wonder what example experience or knowledge of death did they know yeah uh well i, I don't there's no, there's nothing really given to us as far as what happened everything that happened in the garden of eden they weren't there very long now this is just my opinion mike but i believe eve saw the serpent and saw that the serpent never dies a natural death and the serpent told Eve you also will never die and so I believe today even today the serpent never dies a natural death or the the snake never dies a natural death it's killed in various different ways um, it could even uh, die of itself by being um, what's that word I'm looking for uh, because a serpent will wait for months at a time in one spot waiting for its prey to come along and if that prey never comes along maybe that serpent will die of itself because of no food and water that sort of thing but i don't believe a serpent or a snake will ever die of age die of old age like everything else like we will certainly die of old age and that's what i believe okay it, you want to disagree that's fine but um I think that's what Eve saw in the Garden of Eden and believed that she would also not die. So anyways, it's it could be an interesting conversation. I know for whatever reason people get upset with me when I share that. But uh, Jason Jack, while the sun... Let's see, how was it, 12 and 11 days ago? I must be, okay. I must be pretty well caught up because I read these. I think I read these too. I like that one from a day ago. Okay, so let's get into this one real quick. Yes, the light of the day was made before the sun, and we see the same daylight that was pronounced from the beginning of creation to this day, i.e., the first light we see in the morning is not from the sun, neither is the light seen after sunset. The sun is simply the greater light in circuit above us within the firmament, which gives additional light and warmth to God's creation during the daytime. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened nor the clouds return after the rain. Ecclesiastes 12, 2. The day is thine, the night also is thine. Thou hast prepared the light and the sun. Psalm 74, 16. Yeah, so I, I, I think that's a, an interesting um, occurrence in the Bible that gets ignored by a whole lot of people the fact that the sun was not made until day four and I think it gets ignored because people willingly knowingly ignore it because of this uh, you know there's a confirmation bias and this conflicts with their confirmation bias that the earth is a planet and that everything was created from the Big Bang <laughs> I mean, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? People don't want to think about it because it conflicts with their imagination that we are evolved 
super monkeys. And that's, that's what they teach in the schools. That's what they teach little children. That they are evolved super monkeys. And uh, essentially they're telling children that they were created in the image of a monkey. And therefore, when children get older and they read the Bible and it says God created man in his image, they make the simple connection that God is a monkey. Because that's what they teach them in the public school system. Yeah, I think people are, for whatever reason, not wanting to see how wicked the public school system is. The sun looks like a white disc. Don't stare at the sun. I, I probably should have put that disclaimer at the very beginning of this. I, I don't want people going outside and staring at the sun trying to figure out what it is. It's not a good idea. You're taught that as a child. Um, man, men of renown means big reputation. Well, it does. Yeah. It does, um, for sure. Amen. Giants can mean someone of great reputation. Well, uh, according to the Bible, giants means tall men. Okay, let's not let's not confuse uh, that particular. Oh, oh my goodness! I can't never find nothing when I want to. Uh, the people is greater and taller than we. Okay, so we see. A people great and many and tall. I'm talking about the giants. So you'll see that these same people are referred to as giants. Okay, so that's what a giant is. It's a very tall, very big people. And there was a lot of them. Not just a few. Not just a few red-headed cave dwellers. There was a whole bunch of them. And uh, you could argue that there are giants, not as tall, but there are giants today. There are certainly evidence that um, of giants. When we see seven feet tall people, if you've ever stood next to a seven foot tall person, it's intimidating. Now the giants of the Bible... We're probably around 9 to 10 feet, which is ridiculous. Okay, and then you, of course you got your fairy tale um, science fiction believers that think they were 300 feet tall or whatever. And that's just stupid. Anyways, according to the Bible, the sun just rules over the day. That doesn't mean the sun is what brings the day light. That's right. Uh, BRL there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown the giants were bef were there before the sons came unto the dots of men All right, so Genesis 4 doesn't say that they were there before it's just, what, when it says there were giants in the earth in those days, it means there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that. Meaning after the flood. Because the whole context of Genesis 6 is about the wickedness of man and God destroying the world by water and God having grace with Noah and his family. And then and he goes on to instruct Noah, of course, you know the story. It, there's no mention of giants before. <laughs> that is ridiculous. So there were giants before Adam? That's not found in the Bible. That's only found in your imagination. All right, this fairy tale stuff. That's why you see a comic book. Because all the stuff here is comic book stuff. You're just. You know, your ideas, I'll, I'll, give, I'll grant you that your ideas are going to be more popular. They are more popular. Right, they're going to sell books. They're going to make movies based on these ideas. 
because ungodly people like to hear this ridiculousness. They like the fairy tale fantasy stuff. They don't care for reality and the truth of Jesus Christ. So the truth, the plain truth, isn't going to sell. All right, so I, I just make, mentioned the Bible never says there were giants before. And then this response is, I will not let God deal with it. I will let God deal with this matter. No use in bickering. Um, now, that's on you, buddy. That's not on me. Let's see if I can find... Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So, look, I'm not backing away from nothing. You want to have a conversation? I'm here to have that conversation. But to give up and say, I'll let God deal with it. It sounds to me like um, this is familiar to me. Uh, I used to have conversations, or maybe I will in the future as well, but I've had conversations with Mormons, and you, you pin them down on something, on anything, and their response is, their go-to is, well, just you got to pray about it. Just pray about it. Well, fine, I pray about it, but what you're saying conflicts with, what, with what's in the Bible. Well, you got to pray about it. What's there to pray about? This teaching conflicts with the Bible. Pray about it? What? Okay, I pray about it. But it's still going to conflict with the Bible. <laughs> uh, you know, that's fine. You don't want to talk about it. You don't just hide, you know, confirmation bias. Hide under a rock. Uh, I, I can't live with that certain uncertainty. I want to know the truth. It's like John Lennon said, just give me the truth. All I want is the truth. Right? What is the sun? Well, you go by the definition of in Genesis 1. It's a, it's a, a light in the sky to, as a sign for day. All right, so I'm, now this is, this is going to be a problem. Whenever I see this, I, I don't know why people do this. Darkness was made when Lucifer drew one third of the angels. Okay. You, you can write books, write movies, have TV series, and all the stuff on this name, Lucifer. And yet, when you go to the Bible, it's mentioned one time in Isaiah 14, and it's in reference to a proverb. Where am I at here? I'm sure it's a proverb. It used to be a proverb. No, it's still is. There it is. I didn't go high enough. Okay. Verse 4. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say... And then you go down to verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? All right, so this is in reference to a proverb against the king of Babylon. Now, you've heard me say this before. I'm sure that I contend the word Lucifer is a clue for who the fourth beast of Daniel is and who the beast of Revelation is because the word Lucifer is a Latin word and there's only one country in the entire world today that speaks Latin as its native tongue. Alright, so you connect the dots and figure out who the beast of Revelation is. And the if you know the Bible, you know that the fourth beast is in spirit of the King of Babylon. So the King of Babylon is the first beast and then the fourth beast is not mentioned, but it is told to us in the New Testament 
which is the Roman Empire. And the Roman, and the Roman Empire transitioned from a physical empire to a spiritual empire known today as the Roman Catholic Church. All right, and so again, uh, regarding Lucifer, this is actually from, in reference, he's referring to uh, Revelation. Am I going to be able to find it? Probably not. I can't never find nothing. Oh, what is that? Did I go over? I gotta think now. <laughs> um, oh boy. I gotta think about how that's worded. Let's do it this way. No. Uh, what, what am I missing here? Drew his tail. When he drew his tail. There, that's what it is. Ah ha! And he drew, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. This is the, the woman, you could say, is Mary. Uh, in reality, it's the church. Or, uh, yeah, I think that would probably might be the best way to say it. Uh, oh, well. It's... Um, the people of God, if you will. Uh, but the child is Jesus. And so this is in reference to um, this is all in reference to the birth of Jesus and how the enemy is, is waiting for that child to be born and the enemy has come against us. But we've been delivered from our enemy. And Jesus has overcome the world. So this is, all this is a picture of the world we're in. Okay. And let me go back to this comment here. Darkness was made when Lucifer drew. No, there was already darkness before this event in Revelation 12. Because the child is Jesus Christ. There should be no mistake about it. Right? And now, um, oh yeah, there, there should be no mistake about it. After Lucifer fell, that and again, Lucifer is only mentioned one time. It's a proverb concerning the king of Babylon. So this idea that Lucifer fell and became Satan, I don't go along with that at all. There's no other verse to compare that with to say that the proverb against the king of Babylon now, I understand spiritually you can connect them. I get it. But that word Lucifer is, it's there for a reason. And it's not Satan. It's in league with Satan. But it's a proverb. It's not a, it's not a actual thing. I don't know how to explain it. But anyways. People love to, you, you hear people using the word Lucifer more than the word Satan. And I don't, you know, why are you doing that? Bible mentions Satan 49 times. It actually.
actually might be more than that, but regardless. The devil 106 times. And um, well, we can go this way. Dragon 34 times. The serpent 49 times. Lucifer one time. <clears throat> okay. I, and my point is, I think people are making a much bigger deal out of the name Lucifer than what needs to be. And uh, after Lucifer fell and became Satan, that's nowhere in the Bible, Satan was found in the Garden of Eden. <clears throat> okay, so I, I can agree with that because the serpent and Satan are the same thing. And the Bible tells us that. The serpent and Satan. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. It tells us right there. That's what the serpent is called, Satan. So, he was also found going to and fro heaven. <laughs> Why? Why do you do this, Mike? That's not in the Bible, buddy. I think somebody told you this. I really do. And you believed him. And you didn't read it for yourself. Let's go this way. What's a common? More common than I realized, huh? And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence thou camest? Or from whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it so somebody has taken that and told the opposite that no Satan was not walking up and down on earth Satan was walking up and down in heaven <laughs> I don't know Mike I just implore you to read the Bible believe the Bible and stop believing false teachers because I, I hear them all the time I see what they're doing they're selling the fantastic the you know the the incredible mysterious imagination of um, you know craziness they crazy sells in today's world more than ever before and my advice is to stick with the truth. We have the Word of God. This, these words are from God. They're not from man. They're from God. So you can believe God, or you can go to man, and, well, I hope he's right. I don't know if he's right. He could be right. Well, we're going to believe him anyway. Instead of believing God, you're going to believe these guys. Come on. Trust God. Good question. Bible says the evening and the morning was the first day, so the passage of time was the same for each and yet the 24 hour days without no sun, without no moon, without no stars. Imagine that. That totally conflicts with um, the Big Bang Theory and so on and so forth. Yeah, Book of Enoch puts giants. That's another reason why the Book of Enoch belongs in a garbage can. I mean, really, I, I've read it, and anybody can go online and read it, and it's garbage. Absolute garbage, and I have no doubt in my mind, I can't prove it. I have no doubt in my mind that people from the Roman Catholic Church wrote that, and they're fooling people even today more so than ever before. People don't want to believe the Bible. They want to believe these crazy outlandish ridiculous books that are called extra biblical books and they're not extra biblical at all and what you're implying is that God is not in control man is in control of what's in the Bible if God's if if man is in control of uh, what's in the Bible then man can control what is and isn't in the Bible and you're left with your own imagination for not just what books are in the Bible, but what's actually said in the Bible. And uh, you're going to find out, you know, 
it's better that you find out now, but you're going to find out the whole time when the end of the world comes. You're going to find out that that Bible was right the entire time. So you go like back to Genesis 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. You're going to find out without any doubt, without any dispute, that God had it right the whole time and that man has been lying to you your entire life. All right, let's go. Uh oh, what happened? It all disappeared on me. Oh, I just got a, I just got a comment here. If I may, the words worry or anxious are not found in the King James Version. It's the King James Bible. KJB. It's not a version. The King James Bible is, is not a version. It's never been a version. Anyways. I'm getting riled up. I better calm down. Furthermore, God could not sin or be anxious for nothing. Jesus Christ is the God-man and was perfect, sinless. You got it right. How could Christ tell us not to be troubled and then he himself be troubled? That's right. That goes back to John 15. I hope that helps. Thanks for sharing. I appreciate that, Captain Guy. Let's uh, let's confirm what he's saying. Uh, I'm not even sure if I'm getting this right. I've gotten every one of them wrong so far. So, pretty sure I'm wrong about this one. That's the story of my life, really. I gotta think about this. I can't be far off, can I? Ah, I wrong again. Every single time, I'm wrong. I don't care if I'm wrong. I just want to know what's right. So in John chapter 14, verse 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So to Captain Guy's point, why would he say that and then he himself be troubled right? And, and afraid? No, I don't think Jesus was troubled. I don't think he was afraid. I don't think he had anxiety. But without a doubt, he knew what was coming. And no doubt he could feel it all the way into his soul. And he was sorrowful. He was heavy. He was sore amazed right I think we're splitting hairs here and that's why I don't I don't think it's all that big a deal except when you start to claim that anxiety and worry is a sin on one hand and then say that Jesus had anxiety and worry on the other hand I got a big problem with that you're basically saying Jesus is a sinner and them are fighting words okay <laughs> all right so I appreciate that, Captain Guy. And NASA was started by Project Paperclip Research. Oh, two hours ago. You're telling me to research. I better research that. Let me start my research. The nature of the deal that Jack really has cut with the manager of the Overlook it is the most crucial scene. Danny is in a hallway playing with his trucks. Over eight he years ago. That the carpet has these strange hexagonal patterns in them with a long. So, uh, well, that was a lot of fun putting together this. Uh, this vi these videos. Um, it was a very different time in 2013 and 2014. I guarantee you. And, uh, but, um, you know, the paperclip thing, um, where am I at here? Oh, let me go back. So the paperclip thing, NASA was started by Project Paperclip. 
yes and no. I, I mean, I, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, but this, this thing, this idea of being God of heaven is an old idea. And I just shared that idea with you. It goes all the way back to the king of Babylon. So, yeah, I mean, you, you could argue your case. I get it. And I don't think it's a big deal either way. But, well, I think it does help to understand where this mentality, where this spirit comes from. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the Most High. That's NASA. That's NASA to a T. And so you want to claim that this uh, paper clip project was started by NASA? Okay. But it, I contend it goes way back, long before paperclip. So anyways, appreciate uh, the comment all the same. Just have a different view, that's all. I'm not saying you're wrong, I just have a different view. So anyways, that's enough. There's, you know what, I need to do this more often because there's some there's some comments, uh, some pretty good comments and questions and stuff that I've probably, I've probably missed, I'm sure about. So maybe I can try to keep up better on that sort of stuff. But either way, I appreciate you guys, right or wrong. I want to, I want to know what your thoughts are. And I don't, I want to be fair, because the truth matters above all. But uh, if I have a different opinion, you can be sure I'm going to share it with you. So also. If you have a different opinion with me, please do share it. I appreciate the back and forth. I appreciate the conversations. And like I pointed out before, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man.